Let me um, jog your memory and take your memory back to um, uh, December 18, uh, 2016, an article published in Fiji Sun with, with the title Reva Riva at Critical Level. And the article reads as follows. The National Disaster Management Office is advising villages and communities situated along and near the Reva Riva and the Deltas areas to move to higher ground or an evacuation center as a precaution of flooding in the next few hours. <coughs> The Reva River water level has surpassed the critical level of 4 meters. The latest reading taken at 20, 12 hours, 12, 30 hours, is 4.4 meters, and water levels continues to rise. Members of the public are advised to act while it is still daylight. The safety of children, senior members of the family, and those with special needs must be prioritized. Farmers are advised to secure the property and move livestock to safe ground, unquote. Let me read, it, read out to you another article published in, uh, online in Fiji Village titled Hundreds of Residents Living Near Reva River Affected by Flood Waters, uh, published Wednesday 11th April 2018 this year. A quote, the water level in Reva River is continuing to rise. Residents living along the Reva Delta say that flood waters have been rising since early this morning. Hundreds of residents living in low-lying areas in Baulevu, Lokia, and Tonga Village are affected by flood waters. Tonga Bridge is also flooded. A few houses in Withrow Road, Dilkusa, are still flooded. Water entered their homes at about 6 a.m. this morning. Parts of Syria Park are flood flooded. Lockyer Road in Nasori is also flooded. A few houses in Widra Road, Dilkusa are still flooded. Resident Praveen Prasad said that water entered their house at 6 this morning. Unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, flooding and water logging of low lying areas and overflowing of rivers and creeks is generally associated with excessive rainfall, induced runfall, which is beyond conveyance capacity of our rivers and drains. Ladies and gentlemen, some questions, some people question as to why our conveyance systems are overspilling now more often than before. There are people who are saying, why is it happening now more often? Why are our conveyance systems, whether it's creeks, rivers, drains, all the conveyance system, why is it overflowing and spilling over now more often, more frequently than it used to happen 30, 40 years ago? And there's four critical reasons. <clears throat> Firstly, Due to climate change, the intensity and frequency of rain has increased significantly now relative to four decades ago. So the reality of climate change is there and the impact of climate change. One of the impact of climate change is increased frequency and intensity of rainfall. With this change, our waterways, our conveyance system now have to handle much, much more volume of water than what they used to handle before. So because of climate change, the intensity and frequency of rainfall has increased several folds now relative to four decades ago. And because of this, there's new volume of water that has to pass through our waterways. Secondly, our catchments upstream are not able to absorb and hold as much water now as they used to hold before and absorb before. So there are catchments upstream, upstream in the mountains, watersheds. They are an absor they absorb water, they hold water, but they're not able to absorb and hold water as much now as they used to hold before, because the catchments have changed due to deforestation, logging agriculture practices. And therefore, you don't have that amount of catchment cover now as it used to before to hold and absorb water. And therefore, all those water that is, comes through rain, rain are basically runs off into our waterways. Thirdly, due to poor cultivation practices upstream, massive amount of soil is now passed on to our waterways thus reducing the volume and discharge capacity. So what used to be the volume of waterways, rivers and streams before, that volume and discharge capacity no longer exist because it is filled with 
soil silt material coming from upstream due to bad agriculture practices. And lastly, downstream developments like housing, industrial developments, etc., is resulting in more runoff water now than what used to be before. But before, there were a lot of open spaces, a lot of forest cover, even downstream. But because of industrial activity, housing developments, we do not have those forest cover and open spaces to hold water. And therefore, this water now runs off the roofs, cements, etc., directly into the waterways. So effectively, we have dual effect. Massive amount of water coming in and reduce or reduction in the capacity and volume of our waterways to hold water and flow it out, flow it out into, the, into the sea. So today, we wish to deal with one aspect of this problem, is to desilt one of the largest waterways in Fiji, the Reva River, so that not only so that not only we increase the volume and capacity of Reva River, but also we improve the discharge out into sea. Now that's the primary objective of today's operation, is to dredge the Reva River so that we remove the silt material and increase its capacity and volume to hold water. And secondly, is to improve discharge, flow outflow of water into the river system. Let me give you some basic facts about the Reva River. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the area of Reva River catchment is approximately 3,000 kilometer uh, squared, and the Wanimala, Wanimala and Wanimbuka are the two major tributaries uh, which, which form Reva River when the two rivers join near Wanindawa. The other tributary downstream of Wanindawa is Wainlina, and the large, last tributary which joins the river is Wanimala River just upstream of Reva Bridge. The longest length of main Reva River is approximately 160 kilometers. The annual rainfall of Reva watershed is ranging from 2,500 millimeters to 3,000 millimeters, and the maximum daily rain, uh, rainfall is 68.2 millimeter, and the highest compared to Singotoka, which is just 35.8 millimeter, nearly 41.6 millimeter, and Bar 55.3 millimeter respectively. So, ladies and gentlemen, the soil loss of about 32.3 tons per hectare per year is a volume deposited, um, and the volume deposited is about just over 1 million cubic meter uh, per year. Uh, is the highest volume deposited compared to other catchments, even though erosion rate is lower. So you can see the amount of silt material about one, mi one million cubic meters of uh, silt material deposited in our waterways in, in the Reva River. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nusuri population, there's about 65,000 people residing in the Nusuri area, uh, a um, strategic location of the three provinces, namely the Nathan City, Thailevu, and Reva, respectively. And uh, it has major economic areas, agriculture in particular, uh, forestry, fishery as well. And we need to ensure that we protect our communities. Protection of our communities, settlements, villages, and our infrastructure is paramount to us. Second will be protection of hemorrhage, sharks, and all other species. We want to protect our people, our settlements, our roads, our infrastructure, our schools. If you travel through Nakai, Nakai Congo, you'll pass Nakai Congo School. If you have time, just drop by and go just behind the school you will see that the school, if done nothing to the river bank, the school will erode, wash away in probably about two years' time. That's the level of threat that waterways are posing to our infrastructure, our schools, our settlements, our villages. The elderly here who are from the villages nearby will tell you how waterways, some of the waterways are threatening their villages. Now our priority is to protect them. And that's the message I want to give out that our government is ready as a um, gentleman before me has said, that the establishment of a separate dedicated Ministry of Waterways demonstrates our commitment to ensure that we will protect our communities, our settlements, our villages, and infrastructure in face of climate change. It's the reality, and we are ready to deal with this. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, since um, from 2010 and 2012, 3.6 kilometer uh, from the river mouth was dredged by a contractor China Railway Company and 1.5 uh, million cubic meters of dredged silt and sand were removed from the river bed. Then we had another uh, major outsourcing uh, in 2011 and 12 for river dredging and, um, and now we are um, embarking on undertaking a major dredging work uh, in this river river and the tributaries we're looking at we're looking at removing 40,000 cubic meters 40,000 cubic meters of silt material and sand okay remove we're looking at that and with an estimated projected cost of about uh, $670,000 so we're looking at uh, removing about 40,000 cubic meters of silt material and uh, that you can imagine the amount of um, capacity that will increase for river river to uh, hold uh, hold water and also while we are removing the silt material it will improve the discharge into into the sea with this with this we are looking at um, mitigating and uh, minimizing flooding activities in various uh, villages uh, areas such as Nadokoika, Nasab Kasabu, Nabusu, Verata, uh, the Nasori town area, the Waila area, the Veluwe settlement, Bunimono, Moana, Ndali, Nasori airport as well, uh, Bunisei, Natungandrabu, Wanimbukasi, uh, the Cornelia flats, the Nakakomu area, uh, Nabutu Yamba, Tonga, Drombutha, Nakele, uh, the New Tower settlement, Burimbasanga, Lokia, Nuku, Romani Kuru, Nambua, Drekena, Ndui, Wunuku, uh, Nakolau, Noridibu, uh, Uthia. So these are some of the areas uh, where not only um, farms, not only households, but other infrastructure are uh, under threat. And uh, by, by dealing, by uh, fixing our waterways, we, we will definitely provide a major relief uh, in terms of protecting, protecting and providing security to our households, communities and villages and settlements. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to reiterate our government's commitment to provide a safe and productive environment uh, for all communities to progress well, and our ministry is now organizing itself to mitigate uh, flooding activities, not only here, but throughout Fiji. This is, as you would have noted from media reports and my ministerial statements, that we have um, pulled out uh, for tender uh, to dredge uh, Singotoka River as well as uh, the Penang River. And uh, I also want to um, uh, inform you that we are also uh, working very closely with some private sector dredging companies in a, um, a PPP model, a private public partnership model, uh, to um, help us uh, dredge quickly some of the other tributaries uh, in, in Suva, Greater Nasori area, as well as uh, Western Division. Uh, because um, I think it, we also need to look at more, more cost-effective models to help us uh, deal with this particular issue, which is becoming a, a major uh, threat to our communities, societies, and, and settlements and villages. So with this word, uh, with this word and um, I wish to, um, it's my pleasure today to uh, go down and um, officially uh, commission the dredger, and I look forward to uh, working with the communities here um, to see how we can further assist them to protect uh, them uh, in terms of any other issue arising from waterways. Uh, and I certainly after this we will have a telephone session to um, hear you all out. And, uh, and I look forward to also visiting you uh, at, at your villages and communities to uh, first and see with my team and engineers and see what we could do. But I can tell you that um, with the discussions going on, going on now with Ministry, Minister for Economy uh, with regard to budget submission, I think the next four years are a very exciting time for all of us because the kinds of uh, activities that we have packed in into the budget will ensure that you know, some of your uh, concerns and fears will be dealt with in, in, over the next four year period of time. Thank you again and I want to uh, um, uh, thank the PA for uh, coming uh, and all the members of the community um, and um, the members of private sector, advisory councils, Niaz and Mohan and Pandiji, uh, thank you very much. Naka.